Okay. All right. So I'm gonna do a pretty simple flight, just real quick. Um, just 50 nautical miles. I'm gonna go between these two points here. Pretty bad weather at the moment, but our aircraft is broken and kind of stranded. Um, also, no fuel available at this airfield. You can see there's no fuel and no uh, repair or avionics station here. So we can't carry any um, paying jobs uh, until we get our repairs complete. So we're going to fly to Yankee Golf Tango Echo. We'll just put that in real quick. And we have Jet A available for us there, as well as the ability to repair our aircraft. So we're going to go for that. Let's see, let's hide this so you can kind of see. That probably helps a little bit. So yes, we'll be departing out here, runway tree tree, and flying in uh, for the approach runway 28. And like I said, the weather uh, is probably going to be not that great on the approach, but we'll see. And we got to get, I mean, we got to get there so we can uh, repair the plane and use it further. Alrighty, let's kind of take a look around real quick. Yeah, we're right on the end of the runway here, so it'll be straight out and we'll just depart. See, it's pretty stormy up around here. We're going up to the northwest. Um, let's go ahead and disengage the parking brake and we'll request a pushback here. Hey Dolly, I'm happy to stream. Just doing a quick flight. Still trying to figure, uh, get streaming kind of sorted, everything like that. Also need to go ahead and open up our uh, FS Economy client. That way we're not doing the flight for nothing. Uh, with the weather, it'd probably be pretty cool either way. Going to get pushed back to the middle here. We're going to make a nice little turn. And just get straight out. Come to a stop there. We'll reset the parking brake. Let's make sure I've got this set up as well. So we can see. Yep, there's the client up. So we're on the ground there. Like I said, we can't take any jobs because our airplane's broken. So um, we'll start the client here in just a moment since it doesn't really matter when we started as long as we got our parking brake set and we're still on the ground. TAWS system test. Okay. So let's go ahead and get the airplane started up. Aural warning. Okay. Here we go. Make sure we get uh, nav light on, taxi light on. Set that to auto. Do the uh, boost pump on auto as well. We can see our plan's already kind of loaded in, so we're just going to fly off uh, and then swing back around and come in for runway 28. Get your altimeter set correct. Pretty low pressure, 2944. Bearings on GPS, nav source. We're going to go over to FMS. We'll go ahead and get all the speed bugs up. It's nice to have them as a reference. Um, I think we can pretty much leave the rest of that. Make sure the flight plan's loaded in. Yeah, so it's just us then direct to the um, to the approach, which I don't really have a plate for, so we'll just follow. We'll just follow what it says. That'll work for me. Get the inertia separator up since we're on the ground. Just go through, double check. No strobes on yet, taxi light only. All of that looks good. Make sure our press pressurization is on auto. All right, now let's set the plane up real quick. Go ahead and get the flight director on. Um, see, we're going to the northwest. I'm gonna use, I do in the US, so west uh, even. And it is a pretty short flight, but this thing likes to climb, so 
We'll go ahead and punch in 12,000 feet. Inertial separator's on. And we'll set a heading of... Uh, oops. We'll set a heading of 330. And we'll go ahead and arm a heading mode and arm a vertical speed of a nice casual... Uh, let's see. 1,500 feet a minute. Alright, now let's go ahead and start the flight in FS economy, make sure our airplane's good, so we're burning fuel now. And we need to get across this little straight there to get this thing repaired. Let's get a little bit of power in. Right, so we're just going to go straight out to the runway here and depart. We'll just hold short real quick. Should have plenty of plenty of fuel for the flight, but we don't want to hang around too much. I will go ahead and leave all that off. Let's go ahead and get our strobe lights on. We'll go to landing lights as well. And just real quick, I want to pull up uh, other PFD settings. I want to go to wind and... Oh, it's showing no data because okay, yeah, because we're on the ground. All right, so we should be ready for our departure now. Collapse and then take off position, and we look like we're clear all the way around. Let's take the runway. We'll be looking for ninety knots. Rotate, and we'll climb out at I think it's one ten is VY. And we'll just set the. Uh, Light level change mode to 110. All the way up to uh, 12,000. Like a pretty short runway, so hopefully we can keep it nice and steady. Let's go ahead and get on the power. And release brakes. Airspeed's already alive. Let's stay on the rudder and just try and hold this thing down the center. It's really gusting. Call that 90 and we're up. Positive rate gear up. Flaps up. Go ahead and go flight level change, yaw damper, autopilot. We're going to leave the inertia separator on while we're going through some moisture here. And we'll go ahead and switch over to a nav mode, let it capture and take us on out. The clouds look pretty rough. Man, it looks cool. Hopefully we'll get up above them. We're turning out to sea now, basically. Yeah, VY's 110, but we'll go ahead and hold it at 120. Vertical speed's about 2400 a minute. Now we're off the power quite a bit at the moment. Want to keep our temperatures in check.
already almost through 6,000 feet. I feel like we just took off. We gotta pull that power back just a little bit. See the nice break in the clouds? I think we'll be up above it here in just a few thousand, hopefully. And unfortunately, there's no way for me to really check the weather uh, at our destination, so. and weather is still absolutely beautiful. That looks great out there, out the window. Alright, let's go ahead and get our landing lights off. at uh, 9,000 for 12. Let's go ahead and actually adjust that. Climb up a little higher. We can afford to do 14. Plane's nice and light. Sweet. Can't do anything to carry anything. Make no money. Couldn't even put fuel in it. She was just stranded. Feels bad. basically going to speed up and then immediately start our descent. I think we're going down to 1900. Uh, let's go ahead and actually pull this up on the flight plan. Yeah, so it just has 1900 and then 1800. I'm not sure if it's going to be one of those that gives us a vertical guidance on the way down or not, but either way, as long as we can get somewhat on track and fly our way down, we should be okay. Alright, so we're starting to level at 14. Once we level out, I'll go ahead and set the altitude bug to 1900. So we can just immediately start our descent whenever we're ready. Looks like we got a nice 12 knot tailwind at least, helping us on our way there. Our ground speed's picking up. So in just about nine minutes to our next point, let's go ahead and set this altitude bug for 1900. getting about 300 knots across the ground in this thing already. Do love the TBM. Take a look around outside real quick. It's nice and stormy out behind us, that's for sure. Like 
little pock thunderstorms. Dare I say it actually looks a lot better out in front of us, so... Alright, so we're six and a half minutes out from our first point. It has 1900 feet set in for us at our first point as well. So that's about 12,000 feet we need to lose, and we're going to plan probably for about 2,000 feet a minute on our descent, so um, really we need to start our descent here if we're going to keep a constant ground speed in about 15 seconds. Uh, but since we are going to probably slow down a little bit, we're going to go ahead and, um, especially also since the next point is also 1,900 feet, um, we don't really know if there's other restrictions in place. Like I said, I don't have the approach plate or anything, so we're going to go ahead and continue on this um, until uh, our estimated time is down to five minutes, and then we'll start our descent. And we'll stick to 2,000 feet a minute, pull the power back, probably scrub off some ground speed. Doesn't look too bad over here, but we'll see. There's close enough to five minutes. Let's go ahead and start. Let's pull the power back first, and then we'll start down. Set two thousand feet a minute. We don't need to go idle or anything like that, we could still kind of drive it in, but the ground speed will just kind of naturally come off as we get lower. As we get a little bit closer to this point as well, I'll go ahead and switch the uh, inertia separator back on, and we'll go ahead and get our landing lights back on. Actually, it looks pretty nice and clear down here. Prepared. I believe the airport is sitting right there. But yeah, that's not bad at all. Um, we'll go ahead and fly the approach in the way we've got it planned. Our altitude's a little bit out of shape for us to go in and just do like a visual or something anyway, so... Just for local pressure one more time. Once so we're pretty close to the field, that should be accurate enough for us. Alrighty, and once we start getting ready for our approach, need to keep in mind, uh, takeoff flaps and landing gear can come out at uh, 178 knots, and then we're waiting all the way to 122 for our uh, landing flaps, probably shooting for an approach speed um, around 85 knots. We should have a pretty decent headwind on the way in too, so... and pull back on the power a little bit since uh, we have lost some of our ground speed but because we've got about a 20 knot tailwind now we're just kind of getting pushed into uh, this first point I'm not too worried about it I mean we're still 6 miles away and we're coming up on 6,000 um Actually, you know what, I'm not sure I want to be at 1900 all the way out here. I think that's just kind of an arbitrary 
uh, number it gave us, but... We'll go ahead and keep the speed up. We'll shoot for 1900 at uh, the point after. We'll go ahead and get the inertia separator up now. So we're showing just over a minute. Let's go ahead and bump the vertical speed a little bit, make sure we get down there in time. And uh, we're going to lose a lot of the ground speed here in this turn, since we're losing about 25 knots on the tail. It's actually going to turn into a little bit of a headwind here. To level out, just go ahead and get it down to uh, around the 180 knot mark. That would be ideal. And we'll go ahead and set up um, 1800 feet, since that's what the next point's at. Alright, there we go. We can just get our speed down a little bit more and set a power. Keep the uh, plane nice and clean for the moment. Let's actually go ahead and hit the uh, approach mode. Oh, that's a little crazy, but we're going to go ahead and capture 1800 now. We are inbound. See, there is some sort of a vertical, vertical guidance uh, that we're just coming up on. It probably won't kick in until the next point, but we'll see. And we're well within our speed now to go ahead and drop uh, takeoff flaps and oh, big lightning out of nowhere there. Takeoff flaps and uh, our landing gear. But personally, it is extremely windy out here, and um, we're going to slow this thing right down once we get our flaps out and everything. So I'm going to go ahead and wait on the flaps and uh, the gear until the next point here, and we'll get the gear out. Try and make it just a little bit smoother of a ride on the way in. keep slowing this thing down a little bit more, get closer and closer to the speed we'd need for uh, full flaps. Let's go ahead and go gear. See if the glide path uh, activates here. We're in approach mode, so it should. There we go, so we're on glide path. Good, 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 good. We'll go take off flaps now.
We can go ahead and pull the power out. So now that we're back in the descent, this is definitely where we want flaps. As we come through 122, go full landing flaps, and then we're so we're looking for around 85 knots. There's 122, full landing flaps now. We're gonna have to get a little bit of power in. See our ground speed dropped all the way. Uh, we're going to be doing about 75 knots across the ground because of this wind. On the way in, it's uh, 25 knots from about 315 at the moment. More power, more power, more power. A little gusty. I'd rather not be hovering that low. Yeah, yep, yep. Gonna try and keep it around 90, and it looks like we're below glide path. I want to see if it if it will work to capture it, and if not, we're gonna deactivate everything here and uh, take over for ourselves. Almost bad with the airspeed. Fortunately, this thing can get nice and slow, but don't want to fixate on other things too much. Alright, so it's recovering to get back on the glide path now. Nice and lined up, the wind's dying down just bit by bit as we get closer in. Hopefully this won't be too tough to manage as far as a landing goes. Not uh, nearly as big of a crosswind component as we had. And we're going to go ahead and take over here at uh, 400 feet. That'll work for me. So let's go ahead and get it down to it. If we can get it down to around 85 knots. Smoothed out as we came over those trees, that's nice. Right, we got a little bit of altitude to play with here, so let's go ahead and start pulling the power out. I want to try and make this uh, turn off about halfway down if we can. just a bit before the markers. That'll work though. All right, we are down. And we're going to go ahead and let's get the flaps up. Make it a little bit easier to handle here on the ground. No stress at all about making this uh, turn off. Nice bit of lightning as well once again. Go ahead and exit to the left here. Get ourselves parked up.
Alright, we'll call this good enough. So, we'll hit the client back up for just a second. And then all I gotta do is just press the parking brake. And that'll clear so our aircraft has moved. So now we can um, actually go ahead and go back to the main menu real quick since the flight's been logged. And I'll go back to Chrome real quick. So we can see. I have no aircraft anymore. I believe I have this one leased. So we can see the little icon. It needs maintenance. There wasn't maintenance at the uh, place we left. I can just come in here now. Maintenance. Gonna give us under 5k for the uh, repair cost. And I could go ahead and perform this. And it's done. I pull up a little invoice if I want to see it. it Cost two thousand two hundred seventy-five dollars to get that thing uh, back up and going. But that's better than just having it sit around and not be usable at all. So 